What's up YouTube, Jeff back again and today super excited. Today Google I.O. 2019. If you're a huge Android fan like I am, you probably spent this morning watching the keynote, all the big announcements like the Pixel 3 XL A and the Pixel 3 A. I will have those phones very soon, but today I want to talk about Android Q Beta 3, which Google announced a bunch of new features today at the I.O. 2019 keynote. So we're going to run down some of the biggest user facing features that you're going to notice. Of course, I'll recap some of the other things like security and privacy privacy features that Google mentioned, but those are not really things that you're going to see when you actually use the device on a day to day basis. So a couple of really cool features that they mentioned, which are not actually live yet. I want to talk about those first. Those will be really quick. Uh, in accessibility, uh, you're going to eventually be able to go into accessibility and enable something called live caption. It'll probably be somewhere right here where live transcribe would be uh, right around that area. Live caption lets you enable captions for all videos, things on your device, whether it's in YouTube, Chrome, a local video, things like that. And it's going to translate the video in real time. Now you can do this either with the volume up or the volume down. So if you want to watch a video and not disturb those around you, you can still see a live transcription of the audio itself. Now that is set to roll out later this year, so it's not on Android Q Beta 3, but it is a really cool feature that they announced. The second thing that Google announced, which will also be added to Android Q later this year, but is not on on beta 3 is a new feature in digital well-being called focus mode and also some family settings which will allow you to remotely set um, some permissions for your kids when they're using their devices. Focus mode is a way to basically sort of tune out other apps that you're not interested in while you're trying to get some work done. And again, that is not in beta 3, but it will be added to Android Q later this year. Hopefully in beta 5 or 6, one of those release candidates will have that. We can talk a little bit more about it at that time. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the big features of Android Q that you're going to notice on a user facing side. And one of those features, of course, is system wide dark theme. We now have a toggle in the quick settings up here. You can go ahead and just tap that and it will turn on light mode. Tap it back again. It's going to turn on dark mode for you. That's a feature we've had requested for a long time. It does give you a true black, which is going to save on some battery life. If you go into the settings, all your settings are themed to dark mode. If you go into Gboard, if you're using Gboard here, like in Hangouts, that's also themed to dark mode. And several of the Google apps are now properly themed as well. For instance, here in Google Photos, you can see the theme is very nicely done. Uh, in the previous version of Google Photos, it actually wasn't done that well, but this appears to be uh, nicely thoroughly thought through. Now, of course, they're going to be adding more Google apps eventually with the automatic dark mode when you enable the toggle. One thing I really like to see automatically be enabled with dark mode is Chrome. Currently, that's not the case. As you guys can see right there, I have dark mode on, but Chrome is not using dark mode. So that is certainly something they can improve on in the future. And I'm sure dark mode is just going to get better with more themes and things like that as Google sort of refines it a little bit. Now, the next big change, of course, is gestures. Now, when it comes to gestures, Google made a number of changes in this particular release. And if you go into system under settings and gestures, you'll notice that you now have quite a few options to choose from under system navigation. So their first is the fully gestural navigation, which I'll actually talk about more in a second, but that's not the default. There's the two button navigation, which is the current default. That's what we saw on Android P and that we've been used to for the last year. And then there's the classic Android three button navigation. So if you don't like gestures at all, you can go ahead and enable three button navigation, which is something that a lot of people were clamoring for, really asking for Google to do to bring that back. So if you hate the new age gestures, there you go. So I'm going to focus on the fully gestural navigation because that's the thing that's really new here for the first time that we're seeing an Android Q. Now, basically, fully gestural navigation works very similar to the iPhone gesture navigation system. If you swipe up, it's going to take you home. Uh, you can also swipe along the bottom here to go between apps, which you can also, of course, do on the iPhone. You just got that one little line at the bottom, which you can swipe around. Of course, the big question is, how do you go back? That's always a tough decision when you're designing gestures. Google decided to go with the following. If you swipe from the right or you swipe from the left, both of those things are going to take you back. Now, of course, this can cause some serious issues with apps that have a left sort of um, pull out bar because you can end up pulling out the menu bar instead of going back. And I have noticed this is a bit of an issue, something that they're going to have to think about and work around. I prefer just swiping from the right to sort of get around this. Um, overall, the gestures do seem very fluid. Uh, you can hold here to get your recent apps and things like that. If you're on the home screen, if you swipe up, it'll just take you into the app drawer. So I think they've made a lot of progress. I think they might want to rethink the back uh, swipe from the left, swipe from the right a little bit. Uh, I kind of like the swipe up from the left and swipe up from the right on the bottom 
which is what Samsung has in the Galaxy S10 series. A little bit less confusion and uh, accidental touches for apps that have that menu bar on the left-hand side. But of course, that's just a preference, and I do think this is really progress in terms of going all in on the gestures, and I think that's something that a lot of people want. You guys will have to let me know below what you think about the new gesture-based navigation system. Of course, there are a lot of other changes coming as well. You're getting smart replies in all of your notification apps, things like that. Uh, a lot of security and privacy changes. For instance, if you now go into the privacy tab that they have in settings here, you can actually check all the apps and sort of what they're using in terms of permissions. You can see which apps are using your location and when they're allowed to use the location, when the app is being used or using it all the time. Google has now made it a lot easier to refine when apps can use your location and how they're using them. And of course, that's a great thing. Privacy and security is really the main theme of Android Q, which of course means less changes up front that you're going to notice as the user and more behind the scene changes that are really going to affect how your data is secured and things like that. Now, a couple of notes about stability because people are always interested. I've only been running this for two hours, but I did already notice a couple of bugs. Google has made some changes to the way scoped storage works in Android, and that appears to be affecting certain apps. For instance, one of my favorite wallpaper apps, which is Backdrops, is not allowed to save wallpapers anymore. I tried closing it, reinstalling it. It freezes and crashes pretty much every time. So if I try to save this wallpaper here, you guys will notice it's already pretty much frozen. I can use set, but I can't use save. You can see it's completely frozen. And in fact, I usually have to kind of click on that to sort of get it restarted. And sometimes it takes me a minute and see there, Backdrops isn't responding. It asked me to close the app. So certain apps that use those storage permissions seems to have issues. I'll report on some other issues as I go. Of course, battery life, things like that. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can see all those updates. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed my overview of Android Q Beta 3. You can find me at uh, Instagram and Twitter. The link's in the description. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see future videos like this. I really appreciate you guys checking it out, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.